Hey, hey, we're here, the ladies of Read, Watch, and Wine, and I'm Raya, Treba, Champagne, and Lynn, and we are bringing to you, as usual, our wonderful, opinionated opinion of the book to movie adaptation. So what's the, what's the, what is it today? I don't even, I, I'm so tired, I don't even want to talk about it. What is it called today? Along Came a Spider by James Patterson. And I think we need to say who picked this one. No, we don't. Yeah, we do. We can skip right past that. No, because when it's me, I get it. So we're going to need to say who picked this one. Ta-da. Um, I'll, I'll let everyone know that this was um, a champagne pick again. We've, we've gone through a lot of champagne picks this year so far. Um, but I think Breakfast at Tiffany's was hers too. Really? What? <laughs> I just want to hear it a little bit louder. A little bit louder. <laughs> so this was a champagne pick. Got it. And um, I'm really excited to talk about this. I really am. You are. Yeah. Please, please, please. So um, <laughs> let's do our wine first, though. We forgot our wine. Yeah. So before we uh, get started. Uh, I want to talk about what we're drinking. So we are drinking Linganor. You guys can see this. Linganor wine. And this is a mango sangria. It's a sweet white wine with natural flavors. And it is sweet. Lynn will not like this. (laughs) And what's interesting is that I'm a big lover of sweet wines. But I think because I've been drinking so, uh, so much of that, like, middle wine where it's not too sweet and not too dry I'm on over that this wine no. is so freaking sweet right now that i'm like it tastes like i'm drinking sugar don't leave me tree but don't go over to the dry i'm side. on over oh. to the less sweet side the brighter side come on over listen all i'm saying is that it's really good but it's too sweet okay it is Never too sweet for me, but okay. So that's our wine for the day. Um, we need to get on back to the topic at hand, which is this <laughs> book. <laughs> this book, this book. Um, those of you just now joining, the book is "Along Came a Spider" by who again? Really? You want to know who the book is by? Yes, ma'am. Oh, by James, James Patterson. Patterson. James Patterson. James Patterson. Okay, I just just needed to make sure I. I, I was clear on that. And this and, book and was picked by, by who? Who again? Oh, picked by Champagne. Okay. And, okay. Um, and, and it's- your hand, Champagne, for the folks that may not oh. know who you are. Negative. <laughs> Negative. I don't know who that is. I think it's the light skin girl at the bottom right there with the, right here, Lynn. Uh-huh. Oh, Lynn's, at, Lynn's on I'm your right bottom. Right. bottom. It's okay. Oh, you're up top. No, actually on the live stream, Lynn is at the bottom under Champagne. Yes. Okay. Ray is under me. Yeah, I know what you're pointing. <laughs> Raya. <laughs> Dream us here. That's all I know. And champagne's here to me. Or is it here? That's still the funniest picture. <laughs> I know. Like, yeah. Where is Raya pointing? That picture is hilarious. Nobody's over here. Lynn is there. Champagne's there. Treve is here. I got it this time, okay? (laughs) Okay, so. Okay, so um, the book, the movie. First, shout out to the faux locks. Huh? Yeah, this was not um, a group effort. We did not know (laughs) each of us was having locks today. Right. So the plan. But we do know that we're all sick of Coleman here. We're coordinating. Yes. Yeah. Welcome to a black girl summer. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> exactly, Lynn. Anybody got time for all that heat? And then this rain is coming. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is that why I had a headache today? I felt like I was having a little slight tinge, but then it went away. I had a headache today. Still got All right. So it's the sciences. movie is by the same Anyways. title. <laughs> but um, I guess let's just jump into everybody's opinion of the book book by James Patterson. I am a James Patterson fan. I am too. Which and is why I picked it because I thought 
just for a second that it was going to be interesting. Still a James Patterson fan from the book. Yeah, I actually really enjoyed the book. I mean, full disclosure, this movie is so old. I watched it years ago. Mm -hmm. It actually was one of my favorite, was one of my favorite movies. Um, But the book was great. Like, I really loved the details in the book and then the setting in D.C. and the way he made reference to so much stuff in Washington, D.C. DMV in the house. Um, Can I give a shout out to our listener today? My uncle, the one and only Jerry Joy Senior. Jerry Joy in the house. (laughs) I'm going to go ahead and take that one. I know that's your daddy, but he was my uncle first. So sit down. Okay. (laughs) He's probably like, I don't know how they do. I'm watching. <laughs> Love you, Dad. Oh, <laughs> my uncle Long. Be my uncle Long. But yeah, um, go ahead, Trina. I'm sorry, you were still talking about the movie. I cut you off as usual. Oh no! All I was just saying is that I loved all of the um, references to DMV. Like it just made me all warm and fuzzy, and I'm just. I was really happy about like hearing him just talk about like um, Barry Farms and how he wanted to stay in the community and everything he was doing for the community. I just, I absolutely loved all of those references in the book. Me too. It made, you know, it it made it more interesting to me. Yep. It made it more real. Like you were able to like see the setting better, kind of um, imagine how they were driving around the city, how far it in, um, populated the areas were so i really enjoyed that aspect of the book too mm-hmm. what about the storyline well okay so listen <laughs> uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. We're, we're still on the book so it's okay we can have a nice conversation right now no i no but no for me i well you listen <laughs> okay so i listened to this book on audible and um I started like most of us at chapter one and I woke up at 71 (laughs) and had to keep starting over at chapter one. So yeah, it was a struggle. I don't know why though, because it's not like a, like you couldn't follow it. Like most, like some of the books we've read, I can't follow it. So it's just like, you know, I don't know why I just, it just put me to sleep every single time. (laughs) Because it was really, really boring at points. So for those of us, just those of you just joining us, we are talking about the book Along Came a Spider by James Patterson. And we're going to talk about the book to movie adaptation in a few. But right now we're getting opinions on the book. So Lynn, what do you think? What do you think about the book? I actually love the book. It was boring at times. And I definitely felt that. And I kind of got my brain drifting away thinking about, oh, I need to buy some more socks. Should I just buy them from Amazon? And then I came back and I was like, oh man, I missed like two chapters. So it definitely happened a few times, but I really enjoyed, because I saw the movie first and then reading the book or listening to Audible, I was just like, that ain't happened in the movie. Am I listening to the right book? So then I was like, okay, okay, let me actually pay attention since I'm noticing differences. And I still drifted away here and there. But I did like the book in general. I really enjoyed it. I mean, I thought it was really good. The one thing that um, I think probably why we all tended to drift a little bit, I think there was too much conversation um, about you know, the feelings of the, um, the other officer, the female officer, like that, I wanted to seriously shoot myself, because I was so tired of hearing about it. And then it was there were a lot of details, like there were so many details. And sometimes my ADD sets in and I'm like, but um, the book itself, I thought was really good. I followed the storyline. I was like, okay, what's happening? What's happening? What's happening? Um, so I thought it was really, really good. Shout out to Chitty. Thank you for watching. Welcome, welcome to our, our recorded live and recorded book to movie adaptation of Along Came a Spider. All right. So I think it was a consensus, maybe with the exception of Champagne, that everybody enjoyed the 
walk. I mean, it was okay. I did not not enjoy it. It was just like what I what I gathered from it when I was awake. It was okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So let's talk a little about the adaptation and the movie. Um, Champagne, what do you think of the adaptation? Um, <laughs> <laughs> was it the same movie? It was not the same <laughs> movie. I think they um, used the book. Um, when they look, read the book themselves, like the producer and the director and everything, I think they tore pages from different pieces and just stuck it together to make a whole new screenplay. Yeah, I, I, I agree you know? with you on that. It was bad. It, it was, was so it was bad. bad. It was bad. And it, yeah, it was bad. And the problem with watching, for me, watching the movie before the book is the characters for me. Um, the lovemaking scene with him and the female officer, it being Morgan Freeman was an issue. <laughs> I could not. You're like, oh. Yeah, I just could Ooh. not get it Ooh. out of my head. Ooh. Well, what I think is so funny about this, because I never saw this movie. So Trevor was telling really? me how she, this was like one of her favorite movies. Oh. I've never, I'd never seen this movie. And so I literally went from the book to the movie and I was like, Morgan Freeman's kind of old. <laughs> and wait a minute. And what happened? Wait, wait, what happened to the kids? Where are the kids in the box? Like what? It was so off. Like I was so like the first 10 minutes of the movie, I just remember stopping and saying, yeah, I'm done. I'm, I, I called Trina. I was like, I'm not watching this stupid movie. We yeah. doesn't have anything and what happened to mom? And I mean, I, I don't know. I was pissed. I was so pissed at this but movie. Just imagine watching that movie first and then putting that characters into the book as you're, it's mind blowing. It's just like, oh no, it can't be. It was very disturbing for me. Sorry. Morgan. And I was just I upset was just so- because he was supposed to be this family man. Like, you know, Morgan Freeman's character was completely different. And not just age. I mean, it's just completely yeah. different. It just, oh. I feel like they, when they made this movie, they were like, okay, James Patterson's name is very famous. <laughs> so if we use the title of Along Came a Spider by James Patterson, we can get people to go watch it. We're going to write a totally different story. But use his name. Yeah. And it's all that's happened. crazy. That's you know, crazy. you must be right. There's no way. I because I just I don't get it. There were some things in the book that were similar, as in, you know, the killer was the school teacher, right? Right. And the fact the names were the same. Not the little girl. But nothing else about it lined up. And it was just, it was the worst adaptation. And I don't understand it. Like, what was going on in the writer's and the director's mind to change, in my opinion, which, what was Everything. a great story? It had it had some boring parts in it, but the storyline was a great story, and there was no need to change it, except for the fact that I feel like they wrote it around Morgan Friedman. Yeah. I mean, get an A-list. We've talked about this. Get an A-list actor into a poor written script and... They think it's gold. And poor Morgan Freeman couldn't even run down the street after stuff. I'm just like, <laughs> no, like he's slushing down the street. Pick up your feet, man. Oh, man, and supposed mean, to be young and attractive. Thing when the uh, when the car fell off the cliff, and he's like reaching for him, and I was like, you know, your wingspan ain't that tough, exactly. dude. Don't be reaching for somebody. Sorry, she died, but come on, Morgan. <sighs> Oh my God. It's yeah. a good look. Yeah. It, it wasn't, and it's not even like, I, I, because it was an older movie, like, of course, you know, the cinematography, everything else was kind of bad compared to now. <laughs> but that wasn't, e- it's just the people, man. There's not one character. I, I'm just sitting here thinking, even the killer, like, there's not one character in that movie that fit. The description in the book, oh, except for the little girl. She was a cute I little I don't girl. know. The cop lady, they described her as being pretty and having beautiful blonde hair. And so mm-hmm. she fit the description. 
Treva, no. She was just a blonde-haired Caucasian woman. She did not fit the, the, the character. She was not so, ooh, ooh, ooh. And then she didn't even seem like a police officer. Like, what they talked about, what she went through to get where she is, she wasn't even that role of this, you know, person who had the backstory to her life. Mm -hmm. Like, she looked like a, you know, silver spoon little girl. They definitely fell short on that backstory. I mean, I know at the end when he was going through the pictures and the computer, when he kind of all pulled it together, it was as if he was seeing this backstory, but it fell short on that when it came to her because that was a significant part of her personality. In the exactly. Book. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they only mentioned it like once earlier when she was talking about the handmade Turkish shotgun and how he enjoyed um, playing aces and eights like... And that was it. So I was like, I get the correlation later, but I was like, that's no history whatsoever. Right. And I do have a question. I think I have seen this um, movie before. I have read the book, obviously, and then watched the movie over actually twice. And I continuously miss the same part. So Sanji, the original kidnapper, he was hijacked by Jesse to kidnap Megan and attempted with Dimitri, but how did Jesse know that Sanji was kidnapping Megan to hijack the kidnapping? Oh, because her and her lover were profiling him for a while and they were tracking his computer and everything. Remember the line where someone said the profiler watching the profiler. <laughs> okay. Cause I was like, how did I miss this again? But it only, but that's in the book. I don't, did they <clears throat> specify that in the movie? Because so it wasn't like, really pronounced in the movie, right. but Morgan Freeman, I think it was Morgan Freeman that had that line when he was watching the video and he was just like the pro, somebody said the profiler watching the profiler. And that's how they. That crap was so insignificant. The whole <laughs> movie was just stupid. I mean, I, I Throw through through five or six words from the book and call it the book as what I feel like it. You put a black man in it, you put a Caucasian woman in it, and somebody's kidnapped, and now you think the book is the movies like the book. I mean, that's really all it was. Those are the common denominators. You put James Patterson on it. Right. Yeah, I mean, you're right. It was just bad. The little boy didn't get kidnapped and died. And what was right. this whole thing? Him sneaking out of the embassy and this it was just and I'm so angry because I love this movie. This was Me one too. of my favorite movies Me until too. I read the book. And I'm like, what the heck? You're so stupid. I'm like, please, somebody it all. somebody take this book and redo it in, in, in the 20th century, 21st century, and please do it better. Do it like, right. Please make it correlate to the book, and it will still be an outstanding movie. Mm -hmm. Pick somebody the right age. To play the part, sorry, I do really love Morgan Freeman, but this, yeah, maybe it was cute for this movie, but it doesn't relate back to this book. We can pick another um, blonde oh, Caucasian girl to play the role that looks a little bit more rough and tough. I think we can play, pick, you know, any little kid you want out there. I, it just, it just, and then film it in DC, show DC, talk about DC, put the daggone mama back in there because they talk so much about him being a, you know, the whole persona around him was he was honest. He was truthful. He was a family man. He lost his wife. He, you know, he grew up a certain way. He grew up with his um, Nana. Like, where is all that? Like, somebody now do it now with all this, you know, Black Lives Matter. Do that now, okay? <laughs> Show that we can be okay and not, oh, whatever. Let me take another drink. I know, Wait, like, you want some oxygen? She needs some oxygen. She's upset about it, but she's a deep breath too. This is like to she me, is. Examples of just like whew. whitewashing. My light is about to drive me crazy. Hollywood whitewashing a movie because there would have been so many empowering moments on how he survived a, a rough childhood and how he decided to stay in the neighborhood and get back to the community. It, it's just they missed that opportunity, but. To me, that's in, that was intentional back in the day. Like it was intentional right. not to have that positive piece as it relates to a black man. Exactly. Oh. exactly. Everybody knew him, and yeah, they was all mad. He was, you know, everybody was looking at him funny because he was with the white woman. But 
Hey, it is what it is. Show it. Show it what it was. <laughs> what year was this movie done? 1998. Oh, so it's not even that old that they could have had a, right. like an interracial relationship. Right. 1998. And they were just really focusing in. Or if you paid, if you paid attention in that book, there were so many, so many um, references to the South. And how it was bad in the South. But they was in D.C. Mm -hmm. But they talked about, you know, when they went on their excursion to North Carolina or South Carolina, wherever, where they were back in the backwoods, jumping into some lake with alligators or whatever, out in some woods. (laughs) I don't even know what you're talking about. (laughs) Remember when him and the the officer went and they... um, they went to go. Thank you, Reed. I got my lashes on today. Oh um, they <laughs> they went on. The, they went to like her family house, or they went somewhere. And remember that because they had the cross burning. Am I? Wasn't well, listening to the same book? <laughs> no, no, no I remember it. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> looking at me like I'm crazy. They were talking about how the town they were scared. <laughs> like, wait a minute. <laughs> We <laughs> see this thing raised it in the sun, <laughs> right? She has went back to like a different this book. She read best the best enemies. What? Am I reviewing the right one? There was a cross burning <laughs> at the lake where they were at, and they were so scared to be out because they were scared. And I'm just like, God, this was 1998. Okay, um, but it was in you know the Carolinas. And I just think all of that stuff was just so significant. And I just, hey, Chitty, what's up? I'm so upset over this book to movie adaptation. If you guys get a chance, please read the book. Read it now and then go watch this movie and then come back to this live, right? And comment in there and tell us if we're talking crazy or you feel the same way we do, because this was some garbage. (laughs) <laughs> how did you feel about it? okay and it's it's so really? sad because he's like therapy after this i love this i used I to absolutely love, love this movie I, I i used to watch it all the time every time it came well, you pick the book anyway i know that's why <laughs> i thought the book would be nice i thought it would be good i really i want to know how james patterson feels with his name being on this movie We're after writing that. Such a great book, and then like making this dud of a movie. I'd have been like, take my name off that. That is not. Right. That's not what I wrote. Yeah. Um. I, let's just at James Patterson because this is not <laughs> funny. This is. It's just not funny. So I have a. I have a comment. It's not actually. What, um, Lynn, what you were saying about missing the part where um, the, the the officer kidnapped a kidnapper or kidnapped a kid from the kidnapper. I got, what I gathered from the movie is that they were already looking to kidnap the young lady, the little girl. And when Sanjay did it first, they started tracking him, but they may not be in the case, but that's what I kind of maybe gathered from it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Nice. Let's try. I see what you're saying. I missed the whole thing. So. Right. <laughs> so I'm just in the book. That's a good point. How did it happen? They were all partners in the book, right? Only, um, I don't think so. Sanjay and the detective, you mean? Or the yeah. FBI agent? I didn't I think thought so. Yeah, because she, she was sleeping with the other one, remember? That was the whole point. She was sleeping with Alex Cross. But book. she was sleeping with the, the other cop too. Yes, she was right. actually the boy, the girlfriend of the other cop. That was the whole problem. And I mean, Al, you know, Alex should have listened to Judanana in the beginning. Yeah, she no. told him yeah. this woman gave her a bad feeling. Mm-hmm. Right. Dumb. Right. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry that you didn't enjoy oh. that. Um. Oh, Any other things in the movie that just set you off or just everything in general? Everything in general. The the, the, the people, the casting, the lighting. I mean, Morgan Freeman couldn't <laughs> even run. Um, oh, my God. No, Nana. Where are the kids? Like, what about 
Morgan Friedman's boss. Did you like him at least in the movie? <laughs> Do I even remember who his boss was? <laughs> I mean, that's just. I'm like, he was so <laughs> insignificant, I don't think it mattered. But I mean, you could have pulled any Tom, Dick, Harry, whoever off the street to be the boss. The main characters were ridiculous. Hmm. Ridiculous. Even Sanji, like the way he looked. <laughs> he didn't meet the description in the book. No. No, no, no one I was did. Like, oh. Yeah. No one did. I'm just so upset. All right. Well, you know, um, champagne, this is your pick. And say that again. It's your pick. I own that. I'm aware. You know, y'all dogged me out about Artemis Fowl. And And I I still don't feel like it was Artemis Fowl level, personally. It wasn't. Okay. It really wasn't, Rhea, because I could get through the movie and the book, and I I was not successful. Okay. First, we were talking about champagne. Now you switched it on to me. We're talking about here now. Let's let all the stuff go. Let's you let old up. stuff go. <laughs> Stop living in the past. You brought it up. <laughs> that's how it feels to me. Good. No. Oh, God. Yeah. All right. So anybody out there, if you've read the book or you've watched the movie, give us your opinions. Throw it in the chat and let us know what you think. Um, I think we can move to rating, but I feel like, um, you know, we know where this we kind of had already touched on casting. Yeah. Yeah. So you guys want to go ahead and rate this? I'll go thing. first. <laughs> where you know what? This is this is a let me tell you something. <laughs> this expresses how upset I am with this book to movie adaptation. And if y'all ever watched our podcast, it, uh, a podcast on um, YouTube, if you watch it, I always have a drink somewhere. I didn't even bring a glass today. I don't even have a glass because there wasn't nothing to drink. You ain't even got a sip from me. I am. I, I love the book, but the adaptation was garbage. Garbage. That That's possible rating, so we're going to go with sip. With nothing to sip. Yeah, I think Rhea set it off for me. I'm going to go with a sip. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, uh, me too. I mean, yeah, you pretty much broke it all the way down for everybody. I would imagine. So sip for me. I forced that. (laughs) It's a sip. (laughs) All right. Well, this adaptation is not getting a full bottle. And as you all can see, we just did not like the way that the directors and writers interpreted that book. Not at all. Please read, read the book. It's still a good book, though. It, I, the, I the felt book like was great. The movie is great separately. If you decide not to read the book, then watch the movie. Yeah, because you probably will like the movie because I did. Yeah. For years, since 1998, I enjoyed that movie and would watch it every time <laughs> it was on the television. It's just, it's just, I think the movie's, it's in slow motion. <laughs> I mean, it ain't even bionic man slow motion. It's just slow motion. Yeah. Um. So yeah, what do we give it? Nothing. Nothing. Sip. A sip. Four. Everybody got a sip. Garbage. We all agreed. At least we all agreed. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we all agreed. It was champagne pick, and it was um. <laughs> not a good look. Um, yeah. oh, paint. I mean, I just gotta say it, right? He's two for two this season. That's okay. Right. <laughs> but um, yeah, so anyway, thanks everybody for joining us. This was a very short review because it was horrible. Um this is bad. Yeah. It's hard. Check us out. We're going to be posting the next book to movie that we're going to be reviewing. So try to get ahead of the game. Read the book. Watch the movie so you can uh, join us in the discussion. Go to our Facebook page Read Watch Wine and make sure you select notifications and that way you will get notified every time that we go live and you can join us in our discussion. Check us out on YouTube. Check us out on Instagram. Twitter. Twitter, Facebook, our website at readwatchwine.com. There we go. 
All right. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.